they definitely grew up playing outside, enjoying nature, sailing, on the water, Lake Michigan. But I lived in a big house, and I had a lot of stuff in that house. So living aboard a boat is a little bit, is a lot different from how I grew up. I don't miss a thing. I don't miss a thing. We had a, we had a house fire in my parents' house years ago. All of my personal belongings were at home. Everything was there, and a lot of things were lost or damaged. And um, I don't miss any of it. I didn't miss a thing. It was almost like a burden lifted off my shoulders. It was like, I don't need these things. It's more fun without them, less to organize and clean. <laughs> Why do I live on a boat? Well, I live on a boat because because the scenery is always changing. I mean, I could live in a really small apartment, but the scenery wouldn't change. It's not confining. Even though like my cabin is wicked small, it's like the size of a small closet, it's not confining because I have a horizon everywhere and so much open space. We're, oh, wait a minute, where are we? We're in um, Atlantic City. Atlantic City, New Jersey. A little rainy out there. It's rainy and stormy, and there's a storm coming, so we're staying here for two days and we're making a big breakfast feast. Even if you're at anchor for months, which I've done that, <laughs> the weather changes and it's fun. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> this is good breakfast and this is a good idea. I think it's aesthetically beautiful. It's co so cozy and the practicality of it is beautiful too. I'm gonna give you a tour of the sailing vessel Daphne. Um, this is the galley, which is the kitchen. This is my refrigerator, my icebox here. Dory likes almond milk. Come here, Dory. It's easier just dealing with something that's so small and contained than managing so much more. We have a sink. We've got a two burner stove under here. The head right here. Dory's litter box. And this is the saloon. This is where I sit for lunch, and that's it. That's the entire boat. When I first started downsizing, I thought, someday I'm gonna live on a boat. And so I thought I would only keep as much stuff as could fit in my car. I put a few boxes in storage at my parents, but the rest of it I moved aboard my boat. And the rest of it I gave away. I, I, took, I would take carloads full of it to Goodwill. Stuff that I thought was really nice, I gifted to friends. And then expensive items like cameras and stuff, I sold on eBay. Well, I also live on a boat because I want to own a boat. And I can't really afford to own a boat and, and not. So I chose the boat. I moved aboard so that I could have adventures and travel. There is a squall line and the boat won't stop rocking back and forth. I'm trying to sleep. It's pretty windy and the waves are pretty big. I'm taking on water in the cockpit. So I'm trying, trying to get some rest. I'm really conscious of what I bring aboard Daphne because, well, usually it has to fit in a backpack because that's how I get it aboard Daphne because I have to row out to the boat. And um, it's got to be small. Daphne's small. When I sailed down from Martha's Vineyard to Florida, I stopped at Anchorage a lot. So I would hitch a ride into town or bike. I had a folding bike aboard. I would bike to go to the grocery store or walk. My refrigerator's under here. I don't have a freezer. I don't carry any meat. Daphne's a vegetarian boat. So I pack anything that I can find in a grocery store, but I have to plan for longer durations because I can't always get to a grocery store. I can only carry so much food in my backpack when I get to the grocery stores. I pack the, the stuff that lasts the longest in the bottom of the refrigerator. The eggs, the cheese, the green tomatoes, the carrots. I think the green apples last the longest. I have a bunch of oranges left. This broccoli is starting to go bad, so I'm going to have to eat that next. And definitely, if you're planning for a long trip, buy green tomatoes that are perfectly round. This one used to be green, and it's ready to ripe and ready to eat. And I have food hiding in about every corner of this boat. 
and they're stored all over my boat. I have lockers in the sole of the boat. I have there's st food stored on the shelves, food stored underneath the seats, all over the place. It's kind of fun finding food months later that I forgot was there. What are you doing? I'm testing the chips to see if they taste like diesel. Why would they taste like diesel? Because you stored them near the engine room. Because <laughs> the cereal tasted like diesel. Well, we have to see what else is stored down here. Because there's other food down there. If it tastes like diesel, don't give it to Dory. I have a propane, a two burner propane stove. I make one pot meals because there's really no counter space aboard Daphne. Actually, the only counter space is there's a board that goes over the two burner stove. So when I'm not using the stove, I can have a counter. Yeah. Taking out the trash. Well, you have, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop right there. Which trash bag is yours, Benji? Which trash bag is mine? <laughs> Who emptied yours the other day, and I did not. I mean, I don't produce much trash because I can't bring in much stuff aboard the boat. There's not room to create a lot of trash. I find when I'm living ashore, I create a lot more trash. There's no accumulation of things. If I buy something new, something old has got to go. <laughs> well, and I don't accumulate things, too, because it's just a nuisance to have too much stuff aboard a small space. Because I start to not be able to find things, things pile up on top of each other, they get buried deep in lockers, and I can't find anything. So when there's more open space in my tiny little space, then I can find things and use things better. So when it comes down to it, I just choose the things to have aboard that I really need or really like and want. So I find that balance of needs and wants, and that's, that's all I bring aboard. It's not the small place that I found peace of mind, not like the size of the boat, but just how much more... It, it's almost like I lived a bigger life because I lived in such a small place, because the focus wasn't inside the walls of my apartment or inside the walls of my boat. I had the whole... It was like I had the whole ocean. They're playing with Daphne. It was more of like an open feeling of life because my life didn't exist in just that small space. It exists in so much more space than that. And at the times when I live in a house or apartment or something, it's a lot easier to just keep your life at your home, at your job, and that sort of thing. It's not like that for me living on a boat. People always say, oh, I could never live like that. But uh, it's not true. I think people are more capable of living in, with less comfort and in more challenging situations than, than they do. There's Benji back there. Yes, everyone can live with less than they have. And everyone can live in small spaces. I think they can. I don't think everyone can live on a boat. There's a lot of work involved in living on a boat and a lot of know-how. But could people live in a small cabin? Yes. Could they learn to fend for themselves? Could they learn to fix things and manage things in a different way? Absolutely. And would they be happy there? I think the more you have, the more you want. So um, when you reduce, you want less, and so you're happy with what you have. If you have more, you want more, and you're never satisfied, at least in my experience. So I think that people would surprise themselves and be happy 